So what I would like to uh, discuss first off is that I think there is a false sense of security among um, people who think that the current vaccination rates are providing herd immunity. So the problem is that if we want to just say vaccines are safe and effective and save lives, we can all just believe that in a religious fashion, or we can actually sit down and look at the information and dissect that. And that always takes a longer period of time to do. And that's why we're not going to see it done quite as often. So it's going to take me a little bit of time just to explain the measles situation to you, because California was brought up over and over again, and that is used as the demonstration for why we need to get herd immunity up to whatever level. 95% is the um, it was was touted last week, but I can tell you that there is an article by Majumder uh, who now says that we need 99% vaccination rates in order to achieve herd immunity. But I will tell you that even if we had 100% vaccination rates among every person in this room, every child in the state, that there would still be measles outbreaks if measles was brought in from another country or from someplace else. And that is because the vaccine has failed in its um, mission to eradicate the disease, let alone to eliminate the disease. So what we saw in California was very interesting. Um, so we have to just go back a bit, because before this vaccine was, um, was brought onto the market, what we saw was um, the majority of children that were infected were between the ages of 3 and 15 years of age. Those children went on to have lifetime immunity while the virus was circulating in the community and basically giving boosters to everyone around. The most vulnerable people were those babies that were below 2 years of age. Those were protected by their mothers who had natural immunity to the actual disease, which is very well known in the peer-reviewed medical literature to give a longer and stronger provision of immunity to that vulnerable baby. So what we had after vaccination was that those babies are no longer protected. So now, as a result of vaccination, what we have are mothers who are vaccinated, and again, peer-reviewed medical literature, I'm happy to provide this for you, shows that those mothers, at best, are providing very limited immunity, perhaps three months, even while they're breastfeeding. And this comes from the placenta, um, you know, during gestation. So these babies are now not protected directly because of vaccination. The older adults who would, were protected for a lifetime in the face of circulating uh, viruses, again, they're not protected. And that was actually borne out in the California outbreak, where we saw that 11% of those cases were less than one year old in California, and that 56% were greater than 20 years old. So I guarantee you that most people in this room, if you were to measure their immunity level, their titers, you would find that they're inadequate. And in fact, we know from LeBaron's uh, article, which I'm happy to provide, peer-reviewed article, showing that after 20 years, 33% of us do not have protective antibodies to measles. So now we're told that those of us that are over 50 years of age need to start getting measles boosters. That's what we're looking at in the future. So that's the history, some of the history of measles. We're also told that it was all due to the unvaccinated in California. And I have the stats right here that I got from the CDC, MMWR, um, from California, the California Department of Public Health. This is available to everybody. Um, and so there were approximately um, 18, let's see, there were 49 unvaccinated people in that total of 110 cases in California. And I'll tell you that of them, um, 25, let's see, of them, 18 were, were, were old enough to have vaccination, but 12 of them were actually too young to be vaccinated. So it's not really fair to count them as unvaccinated. Nine of them were six, sick when the vaccine was due. Interestingly enough, there were 12% of those cases that were vaccinated. So that tells you that there was a large proportion of the outbreak in California that was vaccinated. And in fact, one of those cases turned out to be a vaccine strain. And when it was later tested because of increased surveillance, they took it off of the register and did not count it as a case anymore. And this has happened several times throughout the world where because of increased surveillance, they find that a case that they see with full-blown measles turns out to be a vaccine strain from the vaccine that child received, and they remove it from the register and don't count it as measles. So this is the kind of information that I encourage doctors to understand um, and that the, there's a much bigger picture than that. 
So as a result of vaccination, what we have now, um, Damien in 1998, um, a peer-reviewed article showed that in twice vaccinated high school students, between 22 and 33 percent of those during a measles epidemic showed that they were not immune enough uh, from the beginning and that they had to have, they, that they basically showed a secondary immune response, meaning that the virus was replicating in their bodies and they were potentially contagious. Um, there are Russian articles showing that hospitals, hospitalized patients uh, during epidemics, fully vaccinated people do not have sufficient titers to protect. So despite this high vaccination rate that we have today, we are not going to have herd immunity and we will continue to have outbreaks. And because of this, uh, there are scientists, Dr. Dr. Gregory Poland from the Mayo Clinic has written extensively on this problem saying that that we need a new vaccine, that this vaccine has, is failing, that we have problems with primary failure, meaning between two and 8% of twice vaccinated people never respond to the vaccine. We have secondary failure from the vaccine, which I talked to you about. Basically, the, the immunity degrades over time, and we like I'm susceptible according to this at this point. So we have a problem. We also have vaccine escape mutants, which nobody wants to talk about, but is in the medical literature. It's happening in China. There are mutant strains that are happening there. 